Greetings, Guardians, and welcome to the Voices of the Vanguard. Today I have with me Sully from Sully Games. Say hello, Sully. Hello, Guardians. And today we have uh, Weapon Retirement on the horizon. Yay, I guess. <laughs> uh, yay for some, I guess. I still don't know how I feel about Weapon Retirement, but we'll get into that in a minute. Yeah. Um, we'll start off the show with what we've been doing. Thoughts on the statue. Uh, the community event. And our question of the week is, what are our goals and destiny at the moment? So let's begin. Uh, have you been playing Destiny? Uh, I hopped on. It would have been Wednesday morning, so Tuesday after work, just to kind of log in to get the quest and like try it out. But I mean, I since I was like in the hotel, like I was just kind of like, yeah, eh, I'm gonna get back into Destiny more since I'm back at home, so I can, yeah do things uh i've been playing mostly final fantasy 14 nice nice big surprise <laughs> um yeah i mean that's i mean i most of my time there i was playing assassin's creed origins so yeah i i logged in i got the quests and that was it i just logged in to get it and then that was it that's the only thing i've done yeah um so yeah, this has been a very non-eventful Destiny time for us. Pretty much. So, I mean, for me being away, that was kind of like... Then having bad internet at the hotel, I was just kind of like, I don't want to deal with bad internet, trying to play like Crucible Gambit, or even trying to do raids. Yeah. So I was just like, I'll do it. Like, hop on, I did Guardian Games, I did my bounties... You know, got to try them done, but after that, I was just like, I'm not gonna hop on with poor internet connection and yeah, not be able to enjoy it. So I I tried to get a a garden going earlier this week, and no one was really that interested. So I said, screw it. Yeah, it's gonna be tough. Like, if we're gonna want to do raids again, um, we're gonna probably have to LFG a lot more. Yeah. Um, hopefully. Next season, we kind of kind of get some type of content and kind of get the player, at least our clan, back into playing again. But yeah. right now, this is probably the best time if you want to play other games. Yep. Play them. Uh, okay, so with that out of the way... Oh, speaking of the devil, the manager just logged on to Destiny 2. <laughs> <laughs> he's one of the few he's still one of the few people that log in every day uh oh, all right <laughs> so the statue i still haven't seen the statue by the way oh really yeah i haven't bothered oh. to look at it <laughs> i mean it i mean it's pretty like easy to miss is it I over guess? at savala like, or yeah it's like a uh it's on this like white table it's like a nightstand and it's like um the titan uh what is there what's their animal the lion the hawk lion the lion's gold and then uh yeah. the hawk and the uh snake are silver and that like that's it it's like a little yeah teeny statue type thing it was just kind of like i mean oh, i, like I saw the statue before guardian games even came out so oh did you see i, I did not see that actually so it's fine yeah i was just <laughs> yeah that's how i because people were like kind of like thinking it was going to be kind of like noticeable i thought it was going to be where the guy like in the center there you know like maybe yeah like but... like that would have been a good location because like that's where you spawn in so like you spawn in and you see it but, but if you I, don't go see zavala yeah. i guess um it's probably a bad place to put it now that i think about it because the other events are there when they come in yeah so yeah. yeah anyways uh let's see what else uh the community event go complete uh, three million uh serif towers on each locale yeah nope yeah, <laughs> <Nope>. yeah. <laughs> i'm not doing that i don't know about you 
Well, I'm going to hop on because I want to get the season title, so I still need to get Flawless. That's true. I still need to do that too. So, and they made it easier to get done, so that's nice. But, I don't know. Like, they should have, like, they needed to, like, kind of, like, read the room. Like, people are kind of, like, I, I really like the community events that we do, but, like, they forced us to do probably the hardest public event in Destiny history. Like, if you don't have at least three people there that know what they're doing, like, you're not going to complete it. Like, so if you're just playing solo and you just want to kind of casually help out with this community event and you aren't getting people there that know what they're doing, like, you're not going to complete it. So, like, you're now having... You're forcing people to, like, basically, like, waste their time with these public events because... Yeah. I, I think I did... I attempted three of them, and I, we only finished one. <laughs> like, come on. And, like, it's nine million public events total. Like, I wish they would have done... If they were going to do a community event, and, like, in terms of, like... Well, it's based would... on the Guardian completions, so. Yeah, it is. So, like, if there's, like, five people there, like, it'll be five completions. Yeah. yeah. But I would have done, like, the Warmind token. I would have done something similar to Fractaline. Because, like, you get your Warmind bits, like, after completing, like, any activity. Yeah. So, I would have done it, like, by turning in, like, the little keys. Like, make it similar to, like, the fractaline and like allow people to just kind of play the game however they want because like people are kind of getting just burnt out on bounties and being forced to like play like a certain event right now like they didn't do a good job reading the room i will give them credit for like quickly adjusting things after everyone was just basically like no but like yeah, I don't, I, this was... They did not read the room very well on this, and... Was not... Not a fan of this decision. And especially, like... I don't know, like, everything that's gonna be tied to this quest line, but, like, this is, like, the first step to get Felwinter's Lie. So, like, is it gonna unlock, like, a story mission as well, or is it literally just to get the shotgun? Like, because, I mean, that's kind of shitty just to do, like, oh, let's force 9 million public events completed for a legendary shotgun. Like, yeah, we talked about this before where it's like, don't, don't try and force something that uh, we're going to get anyways. Yeah. Yeah, there was a theory going around that they made this too challenging because like there's like the potential rumor to where like the tower is going to get like destroyed yeah obviously the rumor so like the theory was like they made it too challenging so that we would fail and that would cause like the almighty to like not fully get destroyed or like pieces of the almighty because of it would come in like destroy the tower obviously that kind of went out the door once Bungie did like the quick update on it but like yeah i'm not not a fan like i thought they did a good job with escalation protocol uh fractal line was whatever like that was easy um because like you literally could just get fractal line just by playing however you wanted to play at the time and this is now forcing you to like hey, go and do this public event, which really nobody really likes to do anyways because it's kind of annoying. And here, there you go. Do 9 million of these. So and then you get a legendary shotgun, which back in D1 was insane, but still. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was just kind of like, come on. Well, like, okay. read, you got to read the room a little bit better. Yeah. Um... Anyways, yeah, let's get into the TWAB. So, we have 
This week at Bungie, new quests that we talked about. Uh, Guardian Games came to a close. Titans won. Fire Hour Battle of the Season is also live this week. I completely forgot about that. <laughs> uh, I, I'm cool not touching Iron Banner. Yeah, I'm good. Like, <laughs> at this point. Uh, yeah, so Fire, Final Iron Banner of the Season as well. Um, players discovered a new, que- <laughs> discovered a new quest. Uh, communities with tasks with help and rescue to complete Seraph Tower events. Uh, yeah, we talked about that. Seen feedback that the tower events are too difficult and then it's hard to wrangle up enough people to join the cause. We have made some service side changes to lower the difficulty of the event to help alleviate frustrations. Uh, we made an error when we calculated how many completions were required. So yesterday we introduced bonus multipliers to help the community's progress. To help get you all the way to the next step. Um, so regarding max power level... Uh, back in February, Luke Smith spoke about upcoming plans for legendary gear infusion. The Destiny dev team has more details on the, how the system is going to work. Uh, the dev team says that today we're going to talk about changes to the infusion system that are coming in Destiny 2. These changes are co- going to be visible starting in Season 11, but won't start impacting your arsenal until Season 12. Um... They want the sandbox to feel interesting, exciting, and dynamic to evolve in compelling ways over time in the same way that our game evolves. Our weapons are the primary way that players interact with the world. And season over season, we want players to discover new weapons that feel powerful, having interesting new perks to explore, and power to build that players craft in new and unexpected ways. Uh, can you take over for a second? I just I need to get a painkiller. <laughs> My teeth are killing. Yeah, I can do that. All right. The changes to the infusion system we're talking about today are designed to promote the following. We want you to be more frequently earned and enjoy more powerful and standout gear. Right now, if a new legendary weapon isn't better than the current best in class, there is no reason to replace your existing weapon with it, Recluse. <clears throat> if a new legendary weapon is better than the current best in class, we risk power creep. Removing challenging from the game or making the item mandatory the only option for challenging activities. Both above points apply equally to new mods and perks as well. Powerful weapons can be error defining, but eventually these errors need to end so these so that new errors can begin. We want strong weapons to have their time in the sun and whenever possible. And whenever possible, we want you to expect and prepare for powerful gear to recycle out of the end game meta. We can't solve this by just making weapons that are always better than the previous ones. This will literally, or this will steadily lower the time to kill in both PvP and PvE until the combat sandbox is neither fun nor tactical. <clears throat> We also want to foster a gradually evolving meta that regularly promotes experiments and debate. We believe Destiny is the best when you have a new desirable thing to pursue and when you have active debates with your clanmates about which of these new things to bring into your new raid or which is going to be hot in Trials next season. With these goals stated, let's break down how the change will work. Each legendary weapon and piece of armor will have a max power level it can reach through infusion. Exotics will not have a max power level, which they talked about. The max power level for these items will be set in the player power cap, attainable three seasons after its release season, four seasons total. This means all legendary gear has a one year span of time during which it can be used in activities where being at a near the player power cap is important. The max power level for these items will be visible in game in season 11, but no items will be at their max power level at the start of season 11. This means all your gear will be relevant in all activities during season 11. You will be able to see what the power level is for all your gear and plan accordingly. At the start of season 12, weapons and armor released in season 1 through 8 will have a max power level at the season 11 player power cap. Gear from Seasons 9, 10, 11, and 12 will all be infusible to new player power caps for one year after their release. Weapons and armor from The Last Wish, Garden of Salvations will be granted exceptions and will have a higher max power level. So, let me just stop right there. 
Um, okay. So they're saying only out of the two, out of, out of all the raids in Destiny Two, only two of them is going to have uh, like usable gear, basically, or well, higher max power than the other ones. Mm-hmm. So Correct. like Leviathan, all those red layers, and then Crown of Sorrow and uh, Scourge are going to have Correct. higher max power, which which is they did in Destiny One. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, to me, I think obviously they probably won't play their cards correctly on this, <laughs> but this would be a good time for like so since they're already kind of talking about Destiny Two like being like year four, year five, and year six. So year five would be a good time for them to be like, okay, we're gonna make Leviathan and uh we'll do crown those will have current power weapons on top of whatever like the new current rate is Mm. like that would be a good way for them to like be able to like recycle some of those old raids and make those old raids relevant obviously i highly doubt that they're gonna do that because i feel like that's almost like it's too smart to do that (laughs) if they're gonna do this like you know power creep um we kind of talked about this a little bit before we started the pod or actually when we started the podcast like obviously like i'm not like the hugest fan when it comes to like retiring old gear but right now destiny 2 like one of the biggest issues is like we don't really have a reason to do some activities because like the weapons that they're giving us aren't really better than what it's already out there yeah the meta is basically stagnant um and at least in the pve side anyways it's all just like recluse and whatever hits hard in the primary slot yeah and then xenophage or whatever yeah well there's the like a bunch of like for power weapons but i mean like kinetic and special yeah. it's kind of just the same yeah um so like and obviously like well it would be easy to be like say like oh you know why don't you just make something better than recluse but they kind of talked about it kind of it's hard because now you have in terms of okay now you're making something easier because now you have something better than whatever's the best out there which then makes those activities easier and we're already kind of talking about we want more challenging activities Mm-hmm. So I don't know necessarily if it's necessarily the best way, but I do know a lot of MMOs do do this, and they retire weapons off of based off of whenever like a new expansion comes out. Obviously, a lot of these MMOs have a heck of a lot more content in it than what Destiny Two is offering. Um, I would definitely like to hear other people's feedback on what they would think would be best. But yeah. I do think this is probably, as of right now, the best step in terms of giving us a reason to do activities. Like, if you give us something that of in terms of, maybe not like a reskin of Recluse, but give us something that is similar in terms of a Recluse, in terms of, like, powerful, and you give us that reason to go chase it, that would be nice. Um, yeah. Um, that's what I don't want. I just don't want to have, like, reskins of guns. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, if they're going to reissue a gun, I think if you already have the gun, you should get it. I don't think it's... That's where it's going to be interesting on how... So, when they retire these weapons, if they bring them back on how are they going to do it? Because they kind of, like... Back in D1, when they did this, mm-hmm. uh, I had my baby, my hot scotch pilgrim mm-hmm. thing was absolutely nasty as a pulse rifle. <laughs> I, had a, I had a god roll on mine. Um, they brought it back, but you couldn't use the one that you currently had. Yeah, Like, that was still capped. It was the same gun, but different. And I was kind of like, well, this kind of sucks, but... I, hopefully as the community we give them feedback on how 
and we want these guns to be re reintroduced into the world. Um, my guess is that they're gonna not allow us to just have the recluse, like they'll make the recluse earnable by another activity mm. or a drop, and we won't be able to use the current recluse in terms of using an example of the recluse if they even bring that back. Yeah, once they retire it. Uh, so for the armors and stuff, um, yeah, I can understand why they could do that now. Well, especially with Chance Mod coming, I -hmm. don't feel so bad about having the, uh, the armor be, um, outdated because you could just transmog it and have that armor. Yeah. I think transmog is going to be huge for the destiny community for like a bit. Like obviously at some point, like it would just be like, there be the norm but in terms of like armor like <clears throat> it doesn't matter because like your armor could always like you could literally look the same for the next three years if you wanted to <laughs> hopefully hopefully they introduce some really cool art styles like later on and like gives you the choice yeah to like look different but like if you really like the armor from last wish or wherever or uh, Leviathan and you want to look like that the entire time like you have that choice like I'm happy that yeah. they're giving us a choice um, so like that armor whatever that's that works out perfect it, interesting to see on how they're going to do weapons yeah uh... alright I guess I'll continue um... if you want to <laughs> <laughs> so those are the basics but uh, you may have additional questions such as can I still use gear that has reached its max power level yes you'll always be able to equip and use any piece of gear unless they lock it uh... <laughs> yeah I mean that's more if it's broken right 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 but I'm just saying so. um, reaching the player power cap is beneficial but not strictly required for most activities in destiny you continue to equip and use all gear in those act- in these activities. Uh, this applies to armor as well as weapons. Yes, all legendary gear that provides power will have max power level starting in Season 12. Armor will no longer have a seasonally rotating 4th mod slot. Instead, there will be mod slot that accepts mods introduced into the game throughout a full year. Recognize that the current need to replace your armor every 2 or two, 3 seasons and Horde armor from past seasons is undesirable. Uh, Transmog, which they talked about, will give you the ability to keep your favorite looks and apply them to new armor pieces with higher max power levels. When gear drops after its debut season, uh, what will its max power level be? It will have the same max power level as it did in its initial release season. Uh, note that this is different than the gear that is reissued. Uh, next question, will gear ever have its max power level updated? Not directly, but the gear can be reissued in future seasons. Uh, these reissued versions will have a new max power uh, level based on the season in which it was reissued. We're going to experiment with how and when this gear should be reissued into the game throughout year 4. Let us know what you think of the different methods as you experience them. So to me right there, it kind of sounds like they're testing out on how they're going to do weapons. What would you like to see be reissued? For like, what, weapons? Yeah. Or armor? Oh, I'm just talking about like on terms on how they're going to like reissue. No, 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 like... but I'm saying they're, they're going to be doing that, right? So what would you want to see? Uh, Right now, I mean, Tranquility. I mean, eventually that's going to be something that's gone. So I'd like to see that be brought back. Oh, yeah. Um sacred i mean obviously they kind of said like that's not going to be affected yeah they said guards for this year but this is probably more of a year i meant more like year year one and two like three oh year one and two uh (sighs) trying to think honestly like i don't think i use anything yeah year one or two okay so i'm gonna say the positive outlook i want that back okay I really love that okay. gun. It's my favorite gun. Okay. Um, also, uh, what's the name of the hand cannon from Leviathan again? 
uh, Midnight Cooper. Yeah, I want to see Midnight Cooper brought back. Yeah, as a sick. Player. I mean, if stout rifles were like kind of like I mean, they're not complete garbage what they used to be, <laughs> but they're still not like good. Um, Nameless Midnight was my baby back in year one. Oh yeah. So, I would like to see that kind of be brought up and be good and have scouts. Yeah. Um, they did bring back Ur- uh, Uriel's gift, so I do want to see positive outlook to come back. Um, okay. Uh, that's it for me. Other than, oh um, well, if they, if Lady Fusion Rifles ever become meta again. <laughs> I'd like to see uh, my um, uh, tarantula come back. Tarantula was nasty yes. man, back in the day. So good, it was so good, dude. It was man. Like that was my that was always in my power. Yep. power level. Mm-hmm. That, that was really good. Yeah, I'll give you that. Uh, all right. So, so uh, we're gonna leave off that. Um, uh we will be at uh we're sure yeah we're sure you'll have more questions that aren't covered so please let us know we're committed to destiny 2 growing uh continue to grow and evolve for the years to come and a part that continued uh, evolution is the curation of an interesting exciting and dynamic player sandbox the introduction of max power level will allow us to create exciting new gear more frequently without the significant concerns of permanent power creep which is unsustainable in any game. Uh, this also should open up creative and experimental builds season over season while letting you anticipate and prepare for how the sandbox will change over time. Please continue to share your thoughts and feelings about these changes as you get your hands on them. I, I am as I am interested to kind of see on how this plays out. Um, hopefully this allows Bungie to be creative. Yeah. Here on out, not thinking like, okay, well, let's make this weapon, but this weapon's going to be too powerful, and now the community is complaining about the game's too easy. Yeah. And then not making interesting weapons, and then we're all complaining, well, we don't really have anything to grind for in these activities. Like, so a lot of I don't really have like a whole lot of feedback on this topic in terms of I want to see on how it's kind of played out. Um, so maybe like in a later podcast and in, in season four, we can kind of give our thoughts on how things are going, but yeah. hopefully things do work out. I, as I said, the current season, I, I still believe next season really isn't going to be like crazy. I, would hope it's better than this season oh yeah god yes wouldn't it be too much wouldn't it be too hard to have a better season than this but i do feel fairly confident that the next expansion we will be very happy with uh so robbie stevens from uh creative lead is here to talk to us about rewards uh so in season 11 we're trying something new with how and where you can earn seasonal rewards. So far, every season year three has followed a formula where the seasonal activity uh, asks for a significant amount of playtime to earn new rewards. While we believe that the new content should be one of the best places to earn new rewards, we also realize that Destiny 2 is a big game and can be frustrating to have so much of your playtime dedicated by or dictated by and focus solely on seasonal activities. Hmm. Uh, so, like the community event, <laughs> right? Uh, in season eleven, uh, seasonal rewards will drop from completing core activities such as strikes, crucible, and gambit, as well as basically every other activity in the game. Uh, there's a full list down below. Uh, we want to make engaging. Uh, we want to make engaging with the entire game feel rewarding. And for every play session, they give you a chance at earning seasonal loot. In addition to new rewards, Season 11 also features two returning weapons, each from Season of the Undying, Dawn, and Worthy. For a total of six weapons that are free for all players. Um, Okay, we talked about some of the places where you'll earn rewards in Season 11. Now let's talk about how you can influence those rewards to chase god rolls and high stat armor. 
Over the last few seasons, we've introduced weapon bounties that give you agency to chase specific rewards. While addressing bounty fatigue will be an effort that extends beyond your three for the upcoming season, we've moved away from weapon bounties as part of that effort. Instead, we're introducing a new type of engram that contains the majority of the Season 11 rewards, and by spending seasonal currency, you can influence the contents of the engram. That's interesting. Uh, I kind of like that. Yeah, we'll like, see how that goes. Um, yeah. It gives, I mean, it kind of has like a, uh, a menagerie feel. With yeah, but with Menagerie, you can specifically go after an item. This yeah. is kind of weird. It's yeah. kind of, like, random. Yeah, but, like, it's still kind of, like, okay, like, you have a higher chance of... Because it is, say, this. yeah, there's, like, ways to influence the Ingram. So I wonder if there's a way to influence it to make it 100% of a gun that you want. Yeah. Of, uh, like, just... I could see them not doing 100% just because, like, in terms of chase for something. But maybe they do because <laughs> Menagerie had that. Um, but I could see maybe having like a cap of like a fifty percent to like something maybe a little bit higher. But it seems like a fairly good change. You know what this is? It's just it's just going to be like a uh, bounty in Ingram form. What are you? What else are you going to do? Right? Like, are you just gonna, is it, are you just going to get it randomly? Like, uh, you walk up, get it, and then you got to just cash that in, or you can do bounties to influence it, or do something else to influence it. Or are you talking about like having it drop the engram? Yeah. I would hope that it is similar to like basically like uh, a prime engram. Prime, yeah, yeah, prime or a legendary engram to where it's like not based off of like, you know, like every so many levels you level up and you get it. Like it's based off of like a random drop from like playing an activity or you kill an enemy and it's laying there okay I, i'm gonna I'm, my hope. I'm gonna read on because apparently they clear up some confusion oh. so we'll see we'll see okay. we'll see if they clear it up uh so cool to clear up any confusion let's imagine if we launch this uh ingram in season of the worthy uh imagine this ingram contained all the season of the worthy weapons and armor now imagine you could take this engram to a serif bunker and spend seasonal currency to focus on the contents of this engram. So it's going to be currency that you'll be spending. But how are you going to get that currency? My guess... Bounties. Well, <laughs> would be my hope would be... I mean, yeah, bounties with the... Uh, whatever the seasonal currency is. So like, just on like Fractaline Warmind bits, you could also get it by just playing the activity. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, now I mentioned you can take this ingram to the bunker, spend seasonal currency to focus the contents of the ingram, so it only contains uh, seven serif uh, SMG and shotgun. By focusing ingrams in season eleven, you can choose your rewards. This includes the ability once you've earned it to focus ingrams, so they only contain season eleven armor with high stat packages. Uh, it'd be interesting if you could focus that armor into like I want have higher mobility or like have um, higher resilience or something like that. That'd be kind of cool. Yes. Now you got to go with that mobility, mobility, recovery, and discipline. Yeah, that's what I love. Uh, so all free players and season pass owners will receive engrams while playing season eleven. However, only season pass owners can access the full suite of focusing categories in season eleven. So, free players they can't focus; they can only um, get them. Mm -hmm. Yep. Which is not Which, bad. I mean, they're getting something. I like it. Yeah, <laughs> like it's you have to reward the people that are buying, paying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, so here's a preview of the Ingram focusing categories that all players can access after completing the Season 11 opening quest. Uh, season 11 armor focusing reduces the number of rewards in the Ingram so it only contains Season 11 armor. Uh, previous Season weapon focusing converts the rewards into in the Ingram so it only contains the six weapons that are returning from the Season of Undying, Dawn, and Worthy. Uh, when Season 11 launches, all players will get three focusing categories, and Season Pass owners will have access to an additional 15. Uh, these are two redacted, 
Uh, public events, strikes, gambit, crucible, dungeons, raids, adventures, nightmare hunts, f forges, reckoning, menagerie, escalation protocol, and blind well. Okay. Is there anything missing? I don't think so. Not that I see. I mean... <laughs> no. Maybe like uh, weekly... Uh... Uh, story missions or something. Yeah, that's what I was just about to say. The daily story missions. <laughs> that's about thing, it. But... That's the only thing I could think of. Yeah. Uh, cool. I like that. I do too. Uh, it's yeah, different at least. In addition to the above list, uh, Ingrams have a chance to drop when defeating combatants anywhere in the system, similar to legendary Ingrams. Uh, they share the same loot pool as Legendary Engrams. And when you hit that loot pool, you'll have a 66% chance to earn a Engram and 34% chance to earn a Legendary Engram. Uh, so, we hope, okay. so we hope this previous Season 11 gives some insight to how we're approaching the community's feedback in the short term. So that's interesting. Legendary Engrams are going to be Legendary again. Right? Um... <laughs> I mean, I think that's a good change. Like, be interesting to see on how like the whole currency thing works out with it, and like being able to like chase like the role that you want it. Yeah. But I mean, it, it's better than what we have now. Yep. Uh, Which isn't saying much. No. So, uh, some fixings. Uh, in the new uh, hotfix 2.8.1.2 uh, coming this Tuesday, May 19th. Uh, we'll have the season pass while fire team XP buffs will now work as intended. Worm God Caress Gauntlets will no longer grant infinite five times burning fists when repeatedly taken on or and off. Uh, and removing Winter's Guile Gauntlets will now properly remove all Warlock's Sigil perks. Hmm. Uh, error codes, apparently more error codes. Uh, May, Friday, May 8th, the potential fix was implemented for those experiencing Watercrest error codes. Since May 8th, we have been closely monitoring uh, reports and have noticed a significant decrease. Uh, so while we continue to progress towards this uh, resolution, we recommend anyone continue to experience watercress errors to report. Uh, and they're coming after the beetle, rabbit, beaver, and anteater codes next. It's, Gotta keep the beaver. It's uh, it's hunting season. <laughs> it's hunting season, I, dude. I would, I don't know, like, I would love to see a beaver emote. Yeah, like uh, in Eververse or whatever. Yeah, like I think it would just be kind of like... Yeah. And it would probably honestly sell really well. Just because like it's basically making fun of themselves. Yeah, I think it did really well. So. <laughs> but. Um, uh, current known issues. The Ascendant Champion Triumph is not unlocking for some players. Enhanced fusion rifle loader, auto loader, and bow loader mods are not dropping as intended. Uh, clench fist perk for the stronghold gauntlets is not working as intended. Oof. And that's it. Kozla uh, yeah. says here at the end, we hope you enjoyed our little preview of what's to come with the redacted engram coming next season. Next week we'll share more changes. Uh, coming to how you earn rewards in Season 11. Some of you know that a world loot pool is. Many of you have no idea what I'm talking about. And we're going to clear that up next week. So, some solid changes coming in terms of, like, seasonal gear and how they're going to be in the loot pool. Yeah. Um, interesting to see on how they are going to retire weapons and do that and see on how creative they can get with new weapons um, is the biggest thing when it comes down to the retirement weapons of really giving like a community feedback so like personally like I don't 
have like a whole lot to say in terms of like what I think until I actually get to experience what we're getting. Yeah. So. But. Yeah. Um. Sounds like we're gonna get a whole lot of new or recycled new, which is welcome at this point. <laughs> yeah. It is. Uh, I mean, it's one of those like things. Like as I said previously in this, you know, podcast, like it would be smart for them to at some point to be able to. Okay, you want some of the season one, two, whatever, three, like go and like make Leviathan relevant again to where if it's not at least pinnacle drops, like those weapons can then be used in terms of the new max power. Yeah. And give people a reason to go back and play some of this old content. It's probably would be a people, smart choice. It's probably people are still gonna um, go for supremacy now. The uh, the sniper rifle. Yep. Because that's gonna be. Uh, it's not gonna be nerfed like the other ones. It's essentially yeah. a nerf, right? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Like I mean, you can still use it, but like. You're not going to be able to use like tranquility or whatever, like in the next end game activity in season four. Yeah. Or no. That would still be around one. I mean, year four. No, it will be gone because yeah, it's, uh, it's like a year old, right? Yeah, I guess it is. So, yeah, it's season 11. Yeah. It came out. Or no, not season 11. We're in season 11. So, season nine. So. When Shadow Keep came out, let's say that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's keep it simple. When the uh, the greatest season we've ever received. But. Yeah. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Vex offensive. Anyone? Right. You should have been no? there for Vex offensive. Yes. Oh, great times. Great times. Greatest content ever. Uh huh. Honestly, you know, still better than what we have now. Oh so yeah. Give them that. Actually say that. Yeah. <laughs> I would give him that. Vex <laughs> offensive. I would gladly have you back. But we do we just were not at the know, time we're not we worthy. just weren't we were just weren't thinking properly. We weren't seeing clearly. Yeah, we were we're not worthy of Vex Offensive anymore, so no. clearly not. So sad. Um <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so our question for the week is uh do we have any goals in Destiny? Um I know you've been pretty uh prominent with your 100k triumph score goal yeah yeah that's my i think my goal yeah will be i want to hit the 100k triumph score for uh before uh at the launch of next expansion whenever we get that um at this point it's too late to get it but i also want to get the uh, grandmaster uh seal next season that's oh my goal yeah so hopefully the content is to the point to where we can have a few of the people in the community or in our clan um come back be at current yeah come back and be current um or else i'm gonna have to lfg which i would rather do with my clanmates yeah. than lfg but that is gonna be another goal do you do you have anything um eventually it's a little bit tougher for you yeah yeah it's a lot <laughs> Uh, there's not a whole lot for me to chase after. I pretty much have a lot of the stuff. Um, yeah. I will say this. I eventually want to do a flawless dungeon. And I want the flawless okay. to be pit. I eventually want to have that. I don't know when I'll go for it, though. Because I already got the solo. So. Yeah. But I want that, uh, so. that emblem. Be like, hey, I solo this flawless bitch. Yeah, which I mean, you said you only really struggled at the. Uh, at the end. Actually, no, not the end. end. I um struggled at was the, it the puzzle. Yeah, the the maze. The maze. Or whatever with the, yeah, wizards. With the wizards. Yeah. I don't know why, because they okay. usually clear that out like super easy. This is that run. I struggled hard. Hmm. Yeah, but sometimes like that encounter, you make a bad jump and you happen to die, or you bump into the architect you, you, you clip your foot on uh on an architect and then you die yeah, yeah. so uh when are we gonna fight the architects is that after the pyramids uh 
I mean, I hope we don't fight Ted Mosby, but <laughs> um, yeah, that was a that was a thing going around on Twitter on who is the architect and when are we gonna fight him? Um, Pretty sure the architects are just I, Bungie, right? Yeah, it's the the devs. That's what I always think. Basically, of that as, yeah. As I guess the environment. Yeah, I would say. Uh, so that's it for me. Um, Solly, where can the people find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at Solly underscore underscore games. And you can find me, your host Thomas, on Twitter, CSU Thomas. You can also find me here at trashshot.com for all the video written content. Uh, GTA 5 is free today from Epic. So I went through some of my like old stuff on Charge Shot, and there was a series that we did. Where it was like the Char Shot Boys presents GTA Five, and that was just cool. us like, like, uh, just goofing around, having a good time. So go check that out. I'll plug that. Um, nice. Yeah, and uh, you can email me Thomas at Char dot com. Leave a review review of our, on our on our uh, iTunes, Stitcher, anywhere you get podcasts. And until then, eyes down, Guardians. <laughs>